Okay, so we are in exercise number four. We're gonna call our first function. Uh, we already called one in another in the previous exercise, but this one's called like that, so I'm assuming we're gonna call another one. Um, so like we said in the first exercise, a function, it's a block of code. So basically this particular block of code here, let me see if I can highlight it in yellow. Yeah, this code right here, it's what we're going to be wrapping in a function. So from now on, every time we say the word calculate area in JavaScript, like from these lines to the bottom, so from line number five to line number infinite, every time we do that, it's going to recognize that there was a function declared like this, and it's going to try to execute the multiplication of the first parameter and the second parameter. That for a human, that it's basically the area. The area is the multiplication of two numbers, being those numbers the length and the edge of the square or whatever figure. So in the exercise, they're telling us to create a new variable named square area for each new iteration of the calculate area function using the figure dimensions. For example, for the first figure, Okay, so I have to do it three times, I guess, because there's three, there's three figures. Okay, so let's do this. So basically, they are telling us to calculate. They calculate the area of the of this tree. Okay, so it will be let. Let let's copy and paste here for the first one. So that's the first one. Let's test it like this, and it's going to probably tell us that we did the first one right or nothing. Declare a square area variable for each call. Square area 1, square area 2, square area 3. You have to call the function calculate area three times with different area parameters. Okay. So the first one will be 4 and 4 because that's the first square here. 4 and 4. And this is going to give me the area of the first square. Hopefully, now I have something green. Still nothing green. Don't worry. Let's just do it with the other three. And we're going to pass two and two. And then we're going to pass five and five. And this one we have to call square area two. This one's square area three. Let's see if it works first. Ah, well, we have to console log it, right? But let's see if the test is passing right now. Oh yeah, it's passing now. My bad. So I, I, I went from not passing any of the tests to passing all of them. Yeah. So basically this is a solution. It's, we have to call, you have to use this function. Like what's the, what do you need to learn from this? You need to learn that another way of doing this would have been to paste here calculate uh, my bad to paste to just multiply like this right we would be able just to do four times four because that's what we're doing right we are calculating the area of the first square and the second square but the reason we don't do it like this and it's better to do it like this is because if tomorrow we decide that the area of a square that that's not going to change tomorrow but bear with me if we decide that to calculate the area of a square now we have to multiply a third one, a third parameter. Let's call it, I don't know, the the death. And we want to receive death. We don't have to come here and add a new multiplication to each of these with the depth of the square now. Like it will be all part of the same function. So it's going to be pretty easy to, to change our code because we just add a third parameter here. So functions allow you to have a lot of reusability. When you have a one-line function like this, it doesn't seem like that because a one-line function is simple. But what if your function has like several lines? And you imagine copying and pasting these all these lines and putting them in each in each of these variables. It'll be a nightmare, right? So it's better to just have it in one function and then you can reuse that code a lot of times.